This is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnipotence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. What's up and welcome to the one within all to the inner verse coming at you from the vast nexus of your soul's highest purpose. I'm your host Chance Garten and today's the day. Now is the time and you're in your right place in this exact moment. As listeners know, we talk at length on this show about ways we can develop and strengthen our mind and body connection. And I think by now, many of us have realized that this balancing act between head and heart is the generating force that kickstarts our inner spiritual fire, fueling us to fearlessly forge beyond the foibles, faux pas, and fallacies we've been programmed with and create a new story for ourselves. It's now a prime time for us to start seeing those rough edges of our personalities as manifestations and symptoms of habits that are harmful to our health and not as unchangeable pillars of our identity. The myth of mental illness is on its way out for we who are becoming illuminated by the truth, which is that most or all psychological shortcomings we experience ourselves are the result of physiological issues in our bodies, because the mind, body, and spirit are one. And we're one with the environment for that matter. Here today to help us enter the upcoming influx of annual springtime energy with open eyes and clear hearts, is returning guest Garrett Graham, a self-optimizing shamanic servant to humanity and really great friend of mine. Garrett is a personal trainer, holistic healer, and spiritual life coach based in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Approaching the idea of wellness by looking at the balance between all parts of a being is a tried and true method to help ourselves live more from the heart, boost our personal energy, and find harmony of mind. When we find ourselves stuck or stunted in our mentality, the key to advancing often lies in finding that correlation to our mental problems in the body chakra system and getting healthier there with nutrition and movement. Through the services Garrett offers at GrahamHolisticHealing.com, those in the Fayetteville area can get with this generous guy for physical training in athletics, bodybuilding, primal movement, yoga, qigong, and more, or for spiritual healing in the form of Reiki, integrated energy therapy, Taoist bio-neuroenergetics, and more. And if you aren't local to Fayetteville, Garrett is also open to consult with to create a plan for all of the above and more. If you reach out to him online for a consultation, working with Garrett Graham is a quick way to find the optimal places where you can change personal habits or beliefs in order to improve your life and fulfill your highest potential. And like many of our previous guests, Garrett is an awesome teacher of personal energy practices, guided meditation, and shamanic visualization journey work. So whether you're looking to help yourself or seeking to become a teacher for others, my great friend Garrett here would love to help. And I am definitely stoked to be speaking to him on the airwaves again. 
Remember, you can find the two-hour extended version of this show by subscribing to Interverse Plus on Patreon, and that by doing that, you also get an archive of over 50 shows, and you're supporting me in creating this Interverse, which is my main reason for being on Earth at this time. So I got to say, thank you for the support, and also the journey can be challenging because I still swim in those nine-to-five waters like many of you, just to keep a roof and food going. And I don't do ads, so I'll never subject you to corporate sponsors just to get some cash. And that's why I want you to know that listener support from people like you is the only thing that helps Interverse grow. However, there is some good news. I did get permission from my nine to five that I can now go down to four days a week. So that's one extra day per week, four per month or more that I'm going to be dedicated to my own personal development, growth and podcasting. And I think that's going to be great for the show. You also might find it interesting to know that Patreon, where we do our Plus memberships, recently listed this podcast as adult only, meaning that to find the show, you had to use the link in the podcast notes or on the Interverse website or type in the URL directly because it was actually no longer searchable on their site. I actually managed to get this reversed, and I'm not even sure why it happened, maybe because I talk about psychedelics sometimes, but I thought it was worth mentioning that We pretty much get censored by all the mainstream platforms on the internet, and it seems like a common theme for consciousness expanding things online, especially from the giants like YouTube and Facebook. So if you want to help me get around that censorship and bring this message to our fellow artists in training who would love our podcast vibes, make sure to sign up for Plus or share the show with your fellow creative and open-minded friends who would love it. It does take a tribe, and I can't do it all by myself, but I'm going to try anyway just in case. And with all that out of the way, let's turn our attention back towards Garrett and inward and seek to feel out that warm spark of bioenergy that radiates from our core outward. Grounding ourselves in the truth of who we are as infinite consciousness temporarily experiencing physical life, let's take a deep breath in and out and follow that rhythm of balanced breathing All the way into the end of this pod, we're about to cast and beyond. Everyone, please join your energy with mine and project a huge heap of love and welcoming vibes to our guest today, Garrett Graham. Thanks for being on the show, man, and welcome back to the Innerverse. Chance, it's an honor to be here with you, man, and I'm excited to dive deep with you today. (laughs) Yeah, me too, dude, me too. It's been far too long. We always have great conversations whenever we get together. And this will be no different, I'm sure. I'd like to just kick off by asking you a pretty basic but important question for what it is that you do. We all know that you can look up lots of things online, but why would you recommend someone find a coach like yourself for physical or spiritual training? So Chance, that's a good question. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm creating a program to where I'm working with clients on a long-term basis. Five months is my current program right now. And I have a few spots left open. And the point of this program is to help people become spiritually aligned with their highest self and to begin to live the life of their purpose. So we all know that, that there is one consciousness, one spirit here uh, in all of creation. And so my goal is to help people to connect with that one spirit and uh, to bring it through in the sense of to bring it through to allow them to live a life of their highest dreams and their highest desires. And so over the last 10 years, I've developed a large skill set to be able to help people in mind, body, spirit, and emotions to optimize themselves fully and completely to put themselves on the path of healing in the path of awakening in the path of embodying their highest greatness. And so this is one thing that I'll be working with the clients and, and you, you know, the people uh, as I take you through this guided journey of transformation over the next five months. Sounds good. I really do hope that some listeners out there find themselves inclined to take you up on this offer because I'm sure that there's definitely a lot of value for the energy input that's required. And what I think is most important to keep in mind is this body, mind, spirit connection. How does physical health correlate to spiritual wellness and mental acuity, if you had to explain that? That's a great question, Chance. And and I'm sure that you know, as we have very similar ideas and paths on this 
physical regard, but the physical vessel is essentially our key and our gateway to connecting with the spiritual realm. And so the condition of our physical vessel determines our level of hookup to the higher realms and our level of inspiration, our level of intuition. And so if we have disease in the physical body or if we have tightness or, or illness of any kind um, in the physical body, then that puts a hindrance on our spiritual connection and our ability to, to really begin to live a life of our highest dreams and our highest desires to connect with the highest blueprint for our life, so to speak. And so in working with people through the physical body, through nutrition, through physical training, through yoga and uh, stretching and releasing movements, it helps to align people to like release blocked energy in their body, whether it manifests as tightness or, or dis-ease of, of any kind and allows them to become strong in their body to get their energy flowing properly to begin to really allow themselves to accelerate and open up to higher levels of inspiration, creativity, and uh, connection with God, with great spirit, and with all of life everywhere. And so in establishing this connection, people are basically allowed to live a life of their highest dreams and their highest desires. You know, so everything kind of merges into one. If we look at the sense of we have multiple timelines, like many, many timelines on our life path. Whenever we begin to really optimize ourselves in this way, all of our timelines merge back to one. And that becomes the one that we're living. And we begin to live the life of, you know, our, our highest destiny here. It's really, really fascinating topic. What you're getting into there is a, even beyond what I had thought about when I was setting up questions today, which is this concept that you're splitting into multiple timelines by not fulfilling your actual intended path in the world. And that's a very interesting point. So I guess to really break that down, a way to conceptualize it, at least metaphorically, could be every time that you do something you're not certain about, something that's not good for you. So a part of you knows you maybe didn't really want to do that or maybe every time that you uh, decide not to follow a personal opportunity that's related to your passion out of some sort of insecurity that you're not good enough or you don't deserve it, you're not ready, then for all we know, the infinite spirit that you are manifesting into this form then has to create an entire parallel universe where you did go and do that because that, that wanted you needed that experience, you wanted it. And so now you're splitting your energy between these two different versions of yourself where, and the version that you're experiencing that didn't fulfill some aspect of your preferred destiny has less energy and less spirit involved in your day-to-day -day existence because your body is your temple for this great spirit, or you could say God. And if you're not, if you have a crappy, like rundown temple, then the spirit doesn't want to live there necessarily. And that's not to say that just because you've been harmed or you're not fully healed, that spirit can't come in and dwell within you. It can. As soon as you start actually loving your life the way that your spirit wants to love life, that it will come back. And then like you're saying, those timelines will merge because you'll get back on the path that puts you into the line of those experiences that your soul wanted. They didn't have to be then. They could be now or they could be you know, down the road since you've now changed direction by a few degrees. I find this really fascinating, this entire concept. Uh, what, what do you have coming up about this? The first thing that I, that I have coming up also, I just want to say, man, that was an excellent explanation. Like the way that you dove into that was really incredible and makes it's me weird. Cause I've never even thought that thought before, but all of a sudden it was like, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, man, we, we're on that wavelength where, where we're accessing the infinite possibilities. I see that, man. I see that in our connection. It's really, it's really awesome. Really cool. So one thing that I want to touch on is that the whole thing about energy drains, you know, and you touched on this a bit too, which is cool because I was thinking about it earlier in the, in what you were saying there is that whenever we're not living the life of our highest destiny and our highest potential, and we're doing, we're making choices in other ways that, that go against our highest potential and what we truly are here to do on this earth, whatever that may be, when we're uncertain, like you said, then we begin to split our energy 
And whenever we split our energy, then we as people, as beings, you know, having this human experience have less energy. We have less energy to follow our desires and our dreams. And then they eventually like change and they fade because we have less energy. And so we're, we're accessing lower timelines. We're accessing lesser timelines than our highest timeline that we've come in here to live. Right. But so once we begin to start acting from our highest intuition, um, <laughs> then we begin to be put back on the path of timelines merging into one. And what happens then, like you were saying, is that all this energy that was previously caught up in us living a life that was not for us, you know, becomes accessible, you know, and so we begin to become much more energized and have that energy accessible to live the life of our highest desires and, and passions and dreams and inner direction. And so that's the thing. It's like to, to he who much is given much is required. Right. And so we look at it in the sense of like, if you're, if you're not putting the energy that you have towards living your highest dreams, you're not going to get any more, you know, towards manifesting your highest greatness, like you're going to stay where you are. But the moment that you start taking those steps towards manifesting your highest greatness, then more energy comes to you. And the more you use that energy responsibly towards creating the vision that you have of, of your life for the good of yourself and all people, all beings everywhere, then you're going to get more energy and so on and so forth. It's like, as we prove that we're responsible adults, like to the universe, then we begin to get more energy you know, and more resources to do things that are responsible and benefit the whole. It's like the cosmic Papa and mother earth are saying, okay, you can have more allowance now because you've cleaned up your room. If like the, your room is your body, taking care of your body, or even I always say to myself when I get kind of in a log jam creatively, well, look around my house. Uh, looks like I've been neglecting, just picking things up that, close to home, starting with your body and working your way out, the decluttering all that and cleaning all that up as silly as it sounds, is like the chores you have to do to get the cosmic allowance of energy to do more. And then following what you're actually excited about is the way to navigate towards what's going to give you the energy because enthusiasm is energy. I found whenever I started doing the podcast, I was a whole different person energetically. Like I can I can go to a full-time job and spend most of my night of my time, my quote unquote free time when I'm not doing stuff that's like important exercise or cooking to be working on this show as basically an entire second job. When before that, I barely had the motivation to do anything other than the bare minimum of what was requ required to get through a day. But here I am the same person. What changed is the... <laughs> My daily habits, I guess, changed, but following that enthusiasm was a big thing that changed. So tell us about some of the body work that you do with people. What type of you know exercises are fundamental that maybe we could all keep in mind? So the type of body work that I prefer doing and that I enjoy doing the most is hands-on healing with people. Um, and so essentially... Like, this is the work that I feel most alive when I'm doing. Whenever, after I finish doing a hands on energy healing session with somebody, I feel like I'm really living my life purpose. And it happens pretty much generally at least once during the session where it comes to me that this is what I'm here to do. And so that's something, you know, we can do on our own through meditations and things like that. But essentially, like as far as what I offer, you know, and, and others as well is that, you know, that's that's a great joy of mine. And the benefit of that is releasing physical, emotional, spiritual and even mental blocks in your body through receiving this kind of treatment and extreme relaxation. And many people feel the energy in different ways throughout their body, but they can actually feel the energy running through their body and I can feel the energy going through me into them and releasing from them things that need to be released. And also a lot of people experience visions, 
you know, and, and have higher spiritual experiences during these kinds of sessions to receive guidance on their life and just, you know, allow things to click into place. So there's many benefits to these sessions. And, you know, really the, the final goal is to help them to, to help you to accelerate onto your highest growth, your highest path, and to awaken to the one presence that you are. And so I think another way is in terms of like body work that we can do on our own physical work, like yoga and exercise and things like that, man, there's so much benefit to this kind of stuff. So just like moving that energy uh, throughout your body is one of the most incredible things that you can do. So I came across an article about five years ago called The Daily Practice. And the author was James Altucher. And one of the four things in the daily practice was to exercise the physical body every single day. And so basically he had this rule that I'm going to sweat 10 minutes a day. And so like for a 30 minute run or something like that, generally you're going to sweat like 10 minutes, give or take. And so, or if you do like high intensity interval training, you can get that done in 10 to 12 minutes, you know? But so basically I came up with this rule that I try to implement in my life, you know, to where I get 10 minutes of sweat a day, you know? And, and so, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to do it every single day, but this is a practice that like I highly recommend for people to do because whenever you do that, you're, you're upshifting your body, you know, you're using your body really what it's for. And so whenever you do that, you access these higher levels of energy because you will get what you say that you need. And so if you're exercising all the time, your body is going to think that it needs energy so that you can exercise. And so therefore, you're going to free up a lot of energy and call in a lot more energy into your body. Um, but, you know, if you're just like sitting on your couch or sitting like in at the desk all day and not exercising, you're going to have the amount of energy you need to get through that kind of lifestyle. So just doing some form of exercise in and of itself is really key. And then the next aspect of the body work is stretching, you know, so you could do yoga formally or just some informal stretching. And so the, the benefits of stretching the muscles is actually releasing the tension and allowing the energy to flow even more. So if we look at the Roby chart or many other types of assessments of, of illness or dis-ease in the physical body, we can see that even just looking at the area of tight muscles, that having, having pain or tightness in certain areas, extreme tightness, can correlate to having dis-ease of the mind in certain ways. So like, for example, having really tight hips correlates with the fear of moving forward. And having a really tight neck has a correlation with inability to, to fully express yourself and also inflexibility in receiving communication from others and so forth and so on. And so working with the physical body directly can help to heal these things within our mind and within our consciousness. And then also, I mean, it just feels good and it allows the fullness of our expression to come forth, you know, in higher and higher degrees. Makes a lot of sense to me, man. When I think about what consciousness is in relation to energy, I pretty much just kind of see them as one and the same. And that consciousness is like water. It takes the shape of its container. So if the shape of your container energetically as your body is like a perfect Leonardo da Vinci Vitruvian man, <laughs> you've really worked on sculpting that body into the best possible vessel for energy flow, then you're going to have a higher degree of consciousness. So we, we're trained with these ideas about like talent and innate IQ or intelligence. But really what I found more and more, at least with myself, is the more imbalanced and healthy my body is and the more capacity for energy that it does have to transmit, then the more intelligent I am. It's just been a straight, like I can curve it on a chart in my own subjective experience. And like you're saying with hard negative emotions or stuck feelings in your mind being correlated to energy stuck in the body 
well, yeah, the energy is taking the consciousness energy is taking the shape of its container. And in this case, it's some contorted grouping of muscles that is spazzed out and has none, none of your attention on it. And that's why it is able to continue being like that. And so stretching is like the same as massage. It brings attention to that part of the body, your mind's attention to it. And then your mind can go, Oh, Oh, that's kind of twisted up there. I'm going to try to just relax and letting go and relaxing is a skill. And it's a skill both emotionally and definitely in your physical body. So practicing stretching can big time help you practice letting go of anything else in life. I've learned that to be true for myself as well. But since we're talking about jacking up the energy circuit flow of the body, I, for anyone that isn't familiar with high intensity interval training, how how would you describe that? It, and it seems like you definitely recommend it as a potential modality on your site too. Yeah, so high intensity interval training, the easiest way to do that is in a method called Tabata training. And so the Tabata method brings in a, well, first of all, high intensity interval training is basically working really hard for a very short amount of time and then resting for anywhere from half of that time to equal amount of time and continuing to alternate back and forth. The Tabata method is generally 20 seconds of really hard work and 10 seconds of rest. And one basic circuit of Tabata is doing this repetition eight times. So it lasts about four minutes. And the way that you can do this is through one exercise for the whole entire time, or you can do it with say alternating exercises after every two exercises. So then you do four exercises throughout, or you can do a different one every single time. But the basic idea is that you work really hard for 20 seconds, whatever you're doing, and then you rest fully for 10 seconds. And, you know, if you want to take a longer rest after that, after four minutes, and then do another round or two more rounds, then you can do that as well. But it's a great way to get a really good workout in in a really short amount of time. It makes sense to me too. You're ja you're ramping up the intensity of your effort to like 100%. And there's very little in life that we do that requires 100% effort, especially physically. Now, I've heard from, especially from a previous guest named Ethan Indigo Smith, a really great piece of advice, especially related to anything physical training wise, but basically it applies to all of life, which is the 70% rule where overall, if you're practicing something on a daily basis, you should give it 70% of your effort overall so that you don't ever burn yourself out because you'll get farther with 30 days of 70% effort every day than five days of 110%, which is not even possible <laughs> and then burning out. But with high intensity training, you can do a hundred percent effort in the intervals, but still be overall for your maximum bodily energy reserves, only tapping into roughly 70%. And, you know, it's not like you have to be perfect with that. There might be days where you know that you should give it a more of a go, you know, but it's all about, it's better to maintain that 10 minutes of sweat than to put yourself through like a, a painful, more difficult experience that sort of turns you off from continuing the practice at all. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing that I see in a lot of people who are just beginning like an exercise program or even a program of any kind in general is going, you know, balls to the wall is going all out, you know, in the beginning and then burning out, you know, but the, the idea, the thing that we're learning, we're learning lifestyle changes. You know, what I'm teaching people is how to create a new lifestyle, not how to do something really fast for a short amount of time and then not do anything then just go back to how you were living before, you know, and that's something that I think that a lot of us, when we get on, on the spiritual path or, you know, whatever path of a goal, that's something we really want that we do is we just want to work really hard and do something like get here, you know, get there, wherever there is, and then not have to do anything anymore, you know, just be able to be complacent. And that's one thing that I've been realizing a lot in my life as I'm, you know, getting older and like, you know, being on the spiritual path and the path of my passions for uh, a lot more time is that, you know, it's not a sprint. 
Like it's a journey and the work is literally going to continue on until I die. Like I have to be vigilant in whatever it is that I'm wanting to create in my life. And so that it takes sustained effort. And so one thing that this brings up for me as well is I'm in this program called man cave, which is freaking incredible. It's with a couple of main coaches, uh, Preston smiles and Jetty Azuma, and then eight, uh, other coaches underneath that. And then there's about 33 of us participants all over the world. And it's a three month program, but essentially like we're learning how to up level our life and step fully into our role as an empowered masculine as an empowered man in the 21st century, you know, it's an initiation of sorts in mo- into modern society, you know? And so one of the things that we're focusing on in man cave is called the one thing. Okay. And so the one thing is essentially like you create this pyramid of things that it starts with one thing, of course, which is like your purpose, you know, in life, it's what you're here to do. And then everything else goes from that. And so it's the one thing that you can do every day that would make your, make everything else easier or obsolete, easier or unnecessary. And so basically there's a whole method with the one thing, you know, to where we create that one thing and we turn it into actionable steps. And so the idea of what brought it to my mind here is that there's three things, you know, so when we use the ideal model of the one thing, we have three things on our template of what we're going to do for the day. And when we complete those three things, you know, that's gold. Like that's what we were supposed to do for the day. Anything else is just icing on the cake. And so if you're like me or a lot of people, you know, at some point in your life, at least, you know, you get really excited about something and you want to do everything all at once. But more often than not, that results in, you know, less getting done. What you were saying earlier about less sustained effort is better than, you know, a burst of short effort. And so that's kind of the idea here, you know, set three things to do every single day you accomplish those things, you're golden, you know, the three most important things. And then anything after that, like more pats on the back, you know, because that's what we're going for here. Like when you create a model like that, it's slow, sustained growth. You're creating a new way of life. You know, you're holding yourself accountable and you're really allowing yourself to step fully into your power and your purpose and what you're doing here by like really just mapping out like where you want to be and, creating the daily steps of how to get there, you know, and that's a big part of what I'm teaching and how I'm working with clients in my life coaching programs. For me, I think it makes sense to get to some sort of level of perspective about whatever your one thing or the three things that make up your one thing is for you personally, uh, though doing those things, not because it's on your schedule, but because this is literally part of who I am. Like, it's just what I want to do right now. I've noticed, I have certain friends that when we're hanging out and talking, they'll just like get on the ground and start stretching. And it hit me that, oh, I could just stretch anywhere at any time, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing. It doesn't like stop me from being with the people I'm with or, or anything. So that's just a freeing in, realization right there. Seriously. I mean, and that goes for like, you could just do some push ups or something. No one's going to judge you. You're actually going to be rubbing off positive on them, uh, if nothing else. So uh, just realizing that what you do every day defines you. And that comes to your creative path, your creative passions, but definitely to your physical, your physical work on yourself and on your body. And then that, like we've been saying, that physical work on yourself and on your body is going to give you more energy, consciousness, awareness, and ability to do those creative passions. So, I mean, that's why I have you here today, considering it's a show mostly like about imagination. Our imagination is one of the things that is first blocked by stagnant emotional energies that are locked in the body because you can't see past them into the inner world of infinite possibilities. (laughs) Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to touch on right there, we had talked about it earlier in terms of letting things go. uh, Well, first, before I go there in terms of experiences in the body. So you spoke about stretching and getting massage and things like that. And like having your energy focused there in that specific place in your body, whenever you're getting a massage, say in your, in your quads and your thighs 
or if you're doing like a, a thigh stretch or something like that, you have your energy focus there. To go deeper into that, like we have experiences that get stuck in our body, right? So if you begin a program of stretching or if you begin to start getting massages or do even like self myofascial release, which is like foam rolling and, and things like that, ways to release the tension on your own, then you'll notice like things start coming up in your experience of life, like in your mind experiences and like maybe like strange thoughts or just an experience that you had forgotten about that you didn't know was still around and that you haven't thought about in five or 10 years or something like that. And so basically like what, what this is, is that we store experiences in our body. So when we complete an experience fully, like it's done, it's gone, you know, and in completion, it, it, it leaves our body, you know, it goes away. But whenever we leave an experience unfinished, it gets stored in the cells of our body and essentially just kind of like in a holding pattern and waiting until the time, you know, whenever you feel safe enough to feel and experience whatever that was, how minor or, or major that experience was to feel it so that you can release it and to heal it. And so that's a cor- there's a correlation with that kind of experience and the experience of stretching and doing personal release work for your muscles right and so that's what makes it so important because it's these unfinished traumas that keep us from feeling the flow of spirit that keep us from you know being in the flow of our life that keep us from tapping into higher energies and higher energy levels you know and higher levels of creativity and so it's it's of the utmost importance that we release these traumas and you know, do these kinds of things. And there's all kinds of ways to do it and go about it. But physical work, like the stretching and release work is one of the best ways. And even more than that, it's an incredible way when in conjunction with, with other types of things, you know, which would be like what I do in my programs is, you know, working not only just from the physical level, but also like working with people in their thought processes and like actually like writing these things down as they come up and moving through them, like feeling them and being in awareness with them as they come up and then creating a new story, you know, so allowing them to finish, you know, and then it becomes empty space. And in that empty space, you want to create a new story. You know, you want to put a new story in there. You find the lesson in that moment. And that's the new story, really. Because that's what integrates and completes the experience is saying when you reject the experience and and store it away and don't process it, it's kind of like you're saying to yourself or the universe that you're not really cool with this lesson. You'd rather not learn it. You think that it was wrong that it happened to you and let's just reject it. And then one thing I wanted, I've been thinking while you were talking, try, <laughs> listening to, of course, but you just kept sparking this in my mind is that it, the diet and our organ health is a big correlate to what we're talking about. And in general, the reason these things stick around in our body is because they, our body doesn't want to heal anything that it doesn't have the energy level to heal or the capacity. So even you see folks that have a very toxic type of diet, but they seem like they feel okay with that diet, but that's because they're locking away a lot of that toxin in sort of like a vault inside and waiting for their bodies, waiting for the time that it has the energy to go and process that. And that happens to be true for most of us living in the West, especially regardless of if we have cleaned up our diet, there's, there's definitely stuff in there in our filters, which are our organs, their filtration systems, that if we haven't cleaned it, it's still there. And I have touched on this before, but when have, having done cleanses in the past, I've found that old injuries that aren't even related to the organs being cleansed will flare up and then heal and then get better permanently in in places in my body. So that's something that other people report too with cleansing. So on the nutrition side, do you also help your uh, say clients, but let's just say your uh, your your friend clients (laughs) with this type of thing? Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Chance. That was amazing and brought a lot of things up for me too. So basically how I work with, with people in, uh, in terms of nutrition, the cool thing is that I've throughout my life experience been able to experience many, many different diets, you know, so I grew up with the traditional, um, healthy diet of my mom's cooking, you know, just but like a normal American diet. And then when I was about 16, I started bodybuilding. First, it was for football, and then 18 on, it was competitive bodybuilding. But so 
I spent hours and hours a day looking into how to eat to grow my muscles. And so for a period of, of my life, a, a, a very large period, I ate for bodybuilding, you know? And so, and then after that, I ate as like a conscious man. Once I started to awaken spiritually, I started to eat as a conscious man. So I started including more vegetables in my diet, but still eating meat, but maybe eating like free range or like better sourced meat. And then from that point on, I started feeling the inclination to go vegetarian. And so I did that and I've done that for a long time. And my diet today is mostly vegetarian. You know, I allow for like um, alterations when necessary, but basically that's how I eat today. And I've eaten raw. So I've eaten vegan and I've eaten raw vegan. And so I've really dived deep into every single one of these ways of eating. And so based on what I see is necessary for the person that I'm working with, you know, I will recommend certain diets or certain ways of eating, you know, based on where they are in their life, how they've altered their diet before, and then also like where they want to be. This is a really, really interesting subject to me, especially lately as someone that's been eating a vegan diet for a couple of years now. I've noticed a big push on YouTube to promote videos of vegans, supposed vegans who have then gone back to carnivore diets because they were dying. And I just think this is fascinating because what I've noticed with YouTube is what they promote and what shows up on those sidebars and stuff has very little to do with what I actually go and look up and more to do with an agenda that's being pushed, but Hey, that's just my conspiratorial thinking. I happen to also get censored big time by YouTube in ways that if you're curious about, I could show you, but not that important. The point is it's, there's a lot of corporations out there that want to scare you into thinking you need what they've got. But what I'm wondering if you could help us as someone that has done a lot of research into nutrition, what are the pros and cons of cutting meat out of your diet and What's a good way to do that consciously? And also, I want to just reiterate what you said, that not everyone's at the point in their life where they're ready to make one switch or another. And I think from spiritual traditions, we even see that our level of consciousness has a lot to do with what type of energy our body wants to integrate and can healthily integrate. Would you say that's correct? I think that basically we are on a journey to becoming light in every sense of the word. And so as we're on a journey to becoming light, we naturally want to lighten our diet, you know, and bring more light into our diet. Love all the different uses of the word, but they all apply here. And so essentially what this looks like and what this means is we want to bring more foods into our diet that are more full of light, you know, that, that have a, a higher light consistency and that consists of more light. And so these would be fruits and vegetables, of course, naturally things that grow through the process of photosynthesis and these kinds of things like that. They're much closer to absorbing the actual sunlight from the sun and transmuting it and turning it into energy and using that energy to grow rather than eating, you know, an external source, which is what we do. That's how I want to start this. And then where I want to go from here is that some of the, some of the greatest masters on earth eat meat, you know, and it's, it's, it's a really wild thing whenever we, we look at it from the sense of like, you know, our bodies are becoming light and like we want to, we want to start eating lighter so that we can begin to grow spiritually, but it's not always necessarily the case. You know, A doesn't always equal B. Um, it's a great path and a great way. But for example, like in the high Himalayas, you know, like they can't grow like vegetables and fruit, you know, there's snow all the time. So they have animals, but you know, people from the high Himalayas in Tibet and so on were some of the most and are some of the most enlightened people in the world, you know, and then there's, you know, that's just an example of necessity, but they aren't factory farming those animals in a way that basically tortures them and never allows them to have any semblance of real life. So there's a big difference there. There is a big difference there, but I also know people who have, who are, have been some of the most enlightened people that I've met in my life who still eat factory farmed food, which is it's really interesting. I'm okay. with you. 
it, it's interesting. I agree. Cause it's like part of advancing to make these dietary shifts, but it's almost as if some people just come in with a certain level of soul energy already in, they just get away with shit and we shouldn't look at someone else's path as an example of our own. We should look at how things make us feel and how our intuition guides us maybe. Exactly. So I wanted to bring in both ends of the spectrum there to start this conversation on nutrition. And so basically now I'll give an example of myself. So how, what I have found for myself is that about seven years ago, um, I was at a Buddhist retreat, my first Buddhist retreat, and somebody at the retreat mentioned to me in an offhand conversation comment, oh, you still eat meat? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I had never really thought about it too much in any other direction. Like I'd eaten meat all my life, a lot of meat at, you know, for long portions of my life. <laughs> And so just, yeah, I hadn't really thought of it. But over the next couple of years, I started transitioning to eating meat more consciously and then like having a desire to not want to eat meat. You know, that's how, that's what that comment did for me. And so, but I, I never really, I never really tried. I never really tried to do it. I was eating a lot of vegetables, which was really cool. And I just knew that I wanted to start heading in that direction, but I wasn't really ready, you know, to make the change. And so then one day I noticed that I hadn't eaten meat probably the first day in my whole entire life since being a baby that I hadn't eaten meat, you know, and it just kind of happened, you know, and after not eating meat for that whole day, I said, well, I guess it's time for me to go vegetarian <laughs> because it was easy, you know, so I went the next couple of days without eating meat and it was easy. So I just stopped eating meat. And the, the differences that I noticed in my life during that period of time, like the awareness that grew in me as a result of that was absolutely incredible. I began to, once I got out of the loop with that, I began to really see like the detriment of the way that we're farming and raising animals. I began to see the importance of the energy in the food that we're eating. Um, and you know, that's another topic, um, but, you know, like the stored, the emotions of, of animals, especially right before slaughter, are stored in the meat, you know, so that actually affects us in many different ways. But so I noticed that and I noticed how just how awful the meat industry is um, after stopping eating meat, which is really interesting that my eyes opened to that at that point. But that's how it happened. And so since then, you know, I started eating meat again and you know, but just like in the sense of like that changed me. So I still, I still ate mostly like legumes, like lentils and beans and rice or, you know, uh, and eggs, you know, and other things like that for most of my diet, maybe meat every now and then. And, you know, I did that for a few years and then eventually just like I went on, I created a program called three months of healing at the end of 2017. And I had a whole bunch of people go on this journey with me that I created where we went from vegetarian to vegan to raw vegan throughout the course of this three months. And ever since then, I mean, I've been mostly vegetarian, you know, there's been just, I've eaten meat just barely, you know, hardly any, any time during that year and a half of my life. And so I mean, that's just kind of where I am with it right now, you know, so summing that story up, basically what I'm saying is like, there was a point when I, I could not, not eat meat, you know, like I said, I said that I didn't really try, but I think that I actually did try a couple of times and it's like, no, I, I can't do this. You know, like my body needs meat. Like it's a real thing, you know, whether it's body or mind, you know, that's where I was. And especially like if I would work out and exercise, you know, even eggs wouldn't do it for me. You know, I needed meat to refuel myself. And then, like I said, whenever I went vegetarian for that first period of time, that six months or so, it just happened. It just happened. And I tested it the whole time I was in it. Like I would work out and then I would eat eggs or I would work out and then I would eat beans and rice and like it would work. I mean, really, I needed eggs at that point 
to refuel me after a workout. But where I am today, like, I don't even need to eat any food after a workout, <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, I need to get the nutrition with the protein for sure. But, like, basically, I'm saying, like, I can refuel off of beans and rice or a peanut butter and uh, and banana sandwich. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, our body transforms over time, you know, and so we have to be kind and meet ourselves where we're at. But if we want to get to a, a deeper potential, know that there's always that possibility there. This is just such a cool topic to me. I think it's important to realize that we don't change our diet because we want to seem more spiritual or something. If that's the reason for doing anything, like to be more quote unquote spiritual, that's a completely in- indefinable thing. Nothing should really be done for the cause of your identity or for social points or because somebody somewhere made a comment to you that made you feel bad. In the case for you, it just planted a seed. It didn't make you feel bad. And that seed grew into a realization that you could do things differently. What is interesting to me is that our bodies, I think, are more really designed when they're in balance to be designing or be producing a lot of the vitamins and, and things that its own system needs without a huge necessity for a perfect diversity and variety and amount of different kinds of foods. Because if you look at humans before a world civilization existed, how are you going to get avocados if you're not in the area where avocados grow? So there's not any one thing that you suppose that you have to have that you need to have. There are Inuits that don't even eat vegetables. They subsist just off of hunting. So Whatever it is that our bodies need, it has more to do with the life force energy in the food that we're taking. I'm sure of it. And that's why, to me, it seems obvious that whenever whatever you put in comes out the other side in roughly the same amount of volume, but all the color is drained out of it. And what is color other than different parts of the light spectrum? So, and brown is always thought to be the lower than the root chakra area color. And then, you know, your poo is brown. So... It, it makes sense to me that you're taking the life force energy from what it is you're eating. And that should be in your mindset about it. And also why that is even useful to give thanks to what it is that is nourishing you, regardless if it's a meat diet or not. But certainly moving away from what's harmful as a cultural practice to the rest of the planet is going to be an accelerator to your spiritual growth and also that which changes the world to be less cruel and less you know, domineering, I think it's very, it's a very deep rabbit hole. And I touched on censorship earlier. One of the things that gets censored big time is just the reality of factory farming. And we don't have to get stuck on that. But if you're curious about making a shift away from a meat based diet and you go start looking up any types of information or documentation of what's going on for these animals, you're going to have an empathetic reaction almost certainly. And what you were saying also about your own personal state changing as your diet was changing, I personally experienced that as well. My emotional intelligence and my empathy with everything and everyone increased in sensitivity massively whenever I stopped eating meat. I mean, I can feel strong emotions from like watching a movie that before wouldn't have even phased me. And that doesn't make you a weaker person. That means that you're more in tune with yourself (laughs) is how I see it. Yeah, it definitely helps with that for sure. Hey, we're we're running up to where you said you had needed me to let you go. So why don't you give us a, tell people about your website and because it'll be launched by the time that they're hearing this and what they can do to get in touch with you and also about your program. Remind them about that so that we can possibly get some of our audience involved with your healing training. Awesome, brother. Thanks so much for this opportunity, man. And so my website is gramholistichealing.com. And you can also reach me at g9gram at gmail.com. Also, my number is 501-764-8268. So you can reach out to me in any of those ways or on Facebook at Garrett Graham. And I would love to work with you guys. So basically, I do energetic healing sessions. I do one-on-one sessions with people for an hour to two hours. Yeah. And 
So I can do that in person or I can do that online and you can uh, contact me about that. And we can talk more details about that, the details of that and set that up. And then also my main gig that I have going on right now is I'm doing life coaching. And so I'm getting geared up to start a five month program uh, with five special individuals. And so I will work directly with you one-on-one throughout the course of this five months to maximize your potential and to work in areas of physical training, nutrition, energetic healing, mental and emotional blocks, and recreating new programs uh, as you create healing there. And so that will be a format of talking uh, once a week and creating programs in all of those areas to help you to reach the highest level of your fulfillment and to essentially bring your connection with spirit into this physical reality and to help you to fully embody all of your gifts and all that you've come here to be and to bring so that you can live the life of your highest dreams. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> life is but a dream as the old song goes. Yes, it is, brother. Which means we pretty much have full ability to choose what we want to dream about and we don't have to be stuck anywhere or in any feeling and there's always an easy way to get the energy flowing again so if what you're trying seems hard maybe having a consult with garrett could give you an idea of what would be an easy thing to start or stop doing that you weren't thinking about and all of a sudden you have that extra energy boost to do the other thing that seemed impossible before it's all it all works like that the smallest little push of extra juice can you know knock the entire mountain down so to speak absolutely and it's time to knock that entire mountain down now we're we're in the time and i know you're feeling it too and it's time to maximize our potential and sometimes we just need a need a hand along the way somebody who's taken the journey a little bit more before us to guide us. And so that's what I'm here for you guys. So hit me up if you would like some support in any of those areas. Man, thanks for talking with me today. It's always a pleasure and an extra fun thing to talk for two hours as opposed to, you know, hey, what's up and catching up for a minute. This was really in depth. I've gotten to know some of what you've been up to the last two years. I still have plenty more questions though. So I'm gonna have to bring it back before uh, before another two years is up. Let's do it sooner. <laughs> Do it, man. I, I look forward to the next time we get on here going even deeper into both of ourselves and what we're doing here and man just all the help that we're bringing for the planet feels good <laughs> really good my man alright thanks for being with us everybody we'll talk to y'all later on this everyone <laughs> another awesome podcast ready for the archives wow thank garrett for coming and joining us for this conversation and thank you thank yourself for the fact that you're actually tuning in and synchronizing your frequency with this type of information which is pure empowerment pure self acceleration This is going to be the fuel for our fire right here now as we go into this 2019 with the full intention to reach sovereignty by 2020 if we haven't already achieved that. And the way to do it is by getting our own personal current 
up and flowing through these type of movement practices that Garrett's talking about so we can actually access these infinite possibilities that live within us. I was really excited to talk about the full spectrum of potentials when it comes to healing our bodies and training and strengthening that mind-body connection is really everything when it comes to our intuitive and imaginative abilities. There's a huge connection there. We have to get over this new age or even sort of old school spiritual idea that you're not your body because whether or not we want to argue whether if you're in your body or your body's in you, your body's in your spirit really doesn't matter, right? It's like every other part of the duality spectrum. If you try to say one is greater, this is all that matters. The body is important or the mind is important and the body doesn't actually even count for anything in the end. Well, I think that's silly. Obviously, your body matters because the different states that it gets into changes the way you feel. And what are you other than a big mass of perceptions and experiences and feelings anyway, besides that physical body? So if you want to hear more of this conversation, you got to get on Interverse Plus, which you can do over at patreon.com forward slash Interverse. You can find the link in the show notes on my website, basically all over the place. Go to Patreon and search Interverse and sign up for $5 a month, which is the best and basically only way to really support this show with any kind of energy reciprocation, which is massively needed. And I'm extremely grateful for it. <laughs> But in this plus extension, we talk about primal movement and intuiting exercises from watching animals, how meditative movement practices and imagination can unlock our energy healing powers, the difference between Qigong healing and Reiki healing, Taoist bio neuroenergetics. That's a mouthful, but it's a really incredible story. We will talk about working with your own energetic field, visualizing your aura, strengthening chakras, integrated energy therapy, also known as healing with the angels. Secret Chinese healing techniques passed down through family lineages, the ayahuasca shamanism training Garrett undertook in Bolivia, getting demons pulled out of your body by a psychedelic nature goddess, the possibility of working with spiritual beings and archangels, but also not needing to rely on it, long distance healing practice, shamanic journey work and taking plant medicines seriously. We also swap stories about heroic doses of psilocybin mushrooms, and we discuss the phenomenon of people from other worlds incarnating as humans, known as star seeds, with a good explanation about that. And synchronistically, Garrett turns out to be my Arcturian brother, if this is a real true notion. And then he gave us a channeled message from Arcturus. Really cool stuff. <laughs> I love one thing he brought up, the whole idea that sitting is the new smoking I already kind of realized that in if my Babylon 9 to 5 job, I had set up a standing desk so I don't sit all day for 40 hours a week. But at home, I did. I still sat at this desk while editing podcasts and all that. And I finally got around to taking this more seriously, this whole uh, working from home thing so I can actually get free from the 9 to 5. And I started that, well, a long time ago, maybe. And one of the things I did to really jumpstart that is finally set up a standing desk situation here at my home studio. So I had to get some comic book boxes from comic books that weren't getting read at all anyway, <laughs> stack them up on my desk, put my monitors on there and my keyboard and all that. And here we go. I'm standing up while I record this and talk to you. And it feels good. That energy flow is nice and balanced. That pillar is straight. The pillar of the spine, which is also, sort of your ladder up to the higher levels of consciousness, that kundalini coming from the base, rising up to the crown. It's what it's all about. And keeping that energy flow intact and undivided is how we defeat and cast out the demons. And yeah, 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 demons, that sounds like a religious term. But let's just go back etymologically and look at what the word demon means, where it came from. And you get the Greek, daimon. And what's a daimon? Okay, you got die, which is two or dos. You know, you got splitting, you have duality. That's what the die is. And then mon is man, daimon or mind, you could even say. So you have divided mind, divided man, consciousness divided against itself. That is what is demonic. So all that stuff that is part of our daily experience that is actually us harming ourselves with either our thoughts or our behaviors or our beliefs, that is a demonic influence. And it can be cast out and purged and rectified and healed and really doesn't matter how you look at it. But 
I guess even casting it out isn't right. You're really just reintegrating it as a part of yourself that <laughs> no longer needs to be in charge and you no longer needs to be cut off and running autonomously. Bring it into the fold. Let that energy be part of your total system because the energy that wants to go do the thing that hurts you, that you have like an addiction about or a false belief about, that energy could easily be transmuted into part of the fuel, a big part of the fuel that actually gives you the juice you need to do the good stuff. So get those demons. <laughs> yeah. And then also, I'm really feeling it right now. Maybe it's the springtime, but maybe it's talking to Garrett. Who knows? Taking this role seriously and living out the truth of what comes up on the show instead of just speaking it, like really making sure that every situation I'm in, every person I'm encountering, I'm just blasting as much love as I can and not at all letting my vibe be diminished by anything ever at all, period. You can't phase me. You can't take this energy from me, but I will give it to you. I'll give it forever, infinitely, because I'm an infinite dynamo and so are you. And it's really exciting. Obviously, I'm pretty fired up about this. And I'm really feeling this wholeness thing. Like Seven Bomar, one of my favorite podcasters over on secretenergy.com. He has he always says wholeness. And, and the reason is because peace is just a peace. You don't want to say peace to somebody. Peace out. Because <laughs> like the language programs us. And do you want a peace or do you want the whole thing? Let's do it. Wholeness, sovereignty 2020. Thank you, Seven Bomar, for that knowledge. Also recommend you just go check out that brother's entire catalog of everything he's ever done because it will blow your mind. But ultimately, let's keep this in mind from Garrett when he says in this episode, when we start to move in out-of-the-box ways, we start to think out-of-the-box. So let's do it. Move in weird ways. Dance around. Get into meditative practices while you're actually moving. Meditative walking, qigong, yoga, Whatever your thing is, whatever you find most calling you right now that would be good to integrate into your life, do it regularly, practice it, but keep that 70% effort rule applied so you're never burning out and you're just feeding off that sweet golden nectar of the personal tree of life that is your spine, that is your central column, that is the balance between your sides, between the ap apparent opposites that are actually the same thing. But guys, it's time for me to get out of here and get on with this day. It's a beautiful morning. It's like 7 a.m. And I am supercharged and ready to go and make beautiful magic happen and love everything I'm doing. So I hope you're also feeling that as well. Big up to Garrett for coming on the show a second time. I bet you'd like the first time he's on the show too way back in season two. If you want to go find that episode, I'll link it in the show notes and yeah, gramholistichealing.com. I made that website. Before I go, I got to tell you that. That was a beautiful experience putting that together. And if you're out there like, man, if I just had a dope website, I could do it. <laughs> I could I could launch this thing, whatever it is. Hey, you can hit me up. We all sometimes need somebody else to help us do something if it's not exactly our proficiency. I mean, yeah, you could all learn how to make websites for yourself. I did. Totally could. But I already put a lot of time into learning that skill, especially on the optimizing it for search engines so that you'll come up in your local area for whatever your business is. And I'd love to help you do that on the cheap too. Like I don't even charge that much because I'm a solo act. Let me know. I'd love to help you out. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to expand what I can do for others. And websites is one of those things. You can see my work at gramholistichealing.com. I think it turned out great and wasn't a too difficult of a process to make it happen. So if that sounds like something you want to work with me on, hit me up, chance at interversepodcast.com or shoot me just like a message and saying, ah, I love life. And I'll be like, yeah, I love life too. And we'll talk about it. Or you can even hit me up with suggestions for who you want to hear coming on the show. I'd love to hear some guest suggestions from the tribe. All in all, you guys are really raising the vibe. I can feel it because <laughs> I'm feeling charged up, man. Wow. It's probably the most excited I've ever been ever. So let's ride this out and ride out into the world and do our things. Bring the love, bring the balance, bring the healing, and I'll see you out there doing it. Also, if you like the bumper music I played before this outro speech and 
the song you're about to hear in a minute, go check out My Own Eyes on SoundCloud. I've linked that in the show notes, but it's M-I-O-W-N-I-Z-E. My good friend Michael Martin, who makes this beautiful music. My Own Eyes is one of my favorite local acts and just one of my favorite things to get down to, period. Really weird, really flowy, really cool. So thanks, Mike, for letting me play your music in this podcast. And go support the homie with a follow. Much love to all of you. Thanks for listening. Share the podcast everywhere you can. Post it online. Tell people about it in person. All that good stuff. And you will be helping me expand and complete and deliver this mission to humanity as I intend to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of yourself out there. Wholeness. <laughs>